Howdy y'all, back today with something that's been a long time coming. It's uh, What's Behind the Cover, episode number 19, and I have been uh, squawking about this issue for some time. It is my beloved Conan number 28. This is my off-the-rack copy. Still in pretty decent shape, right? Considering I've actually read the damn thing, or at least flipped through it, at least, at least a hundred times over the last 45 years, right? Um... The whole thing starts off with this smashing Gil Kane cover. One of the, the uh, classic Gil Kane themes of the hero protecting the woman from the savage villain, right? Um, let's just get right into it here. Roy Thomas, of course, and John Buscema, and Ernie Chua, later to become Ernie Chan, Moon of Zimbabwe, Great Splash, Page, right, Conan, from a hard ride, lays down to get a nice cool drink, the horse can see what's going on, He's already upset. That black stallion, right? Yeah. Goodness. Or should I say crumb? Right? The serpent thing comes down on Conan. Um... A week ago on Nick's Wednesday night chat, a question came up, uh, who, uh, a question for Nick, Anthony, Patrick, and I, the question came up, who are our three all-time favorite comic book artists, and I answered, Gil Kane, Bernie Wrightson, John Buscema and I have to say that it is indeed this Conan run that cemented cemented my absolute uh, love and respect for John Buscema um, And with this issue, I had been buying Conan for about a year, kind of casually, an issue here and there, every two or three months. But with this issue, it, it, it totally cemented my love of Conan the Barbarian, which lasted uh, for years really um, my, my favorite titles of the Bronze Age unquestionably uh, Conan the Barbarian uh, Captain America and the Falcon the Amazing Spider-Man and uh, later on Howard the Duck and again it was this issue that just completely cemented my absolute love of Conan the Barbarian. Um, and if you ask me, the Roy Thomas John Buscema Conan run is uh, right up there side by side with the Stan Lee Jack Kirby run of the Fantastic Four as far as just overall quality 
overall longevity and just a, an astonishing years and years run of a title. But yes, Conan 28. I know I'm not uh, giving much indication of what's happening in this book. Basically what happens is Conan is, is attacked by the serpent at the beginning, as you saw. And basically the second half of the book, oh my goodness. It's like a King Kong thing. The tribe wants to sacrifice uh, the, the, the young virgin, right, you know, to their god. Which is like King Kong. I mean, this is really just kind of um, a retelling of the saga of King Kong. But King Kong never met Conan. Right? You see that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kong never ran into Conan. Right? Anyway, it's, this book is just a beloved childhood memory. Again, it, it cemented, cemented my love of and desire for uh, Conan every month. And it lasted for years. Here's a great uh, full page ad for Tales of the Zombie, the magazine. Tales of the Zombie. Yep. This is the real deal, man. This is the Bronze Age at its finest. This is why me as a nine-year-old child was just head over heels over comic books. And you know what? Here, there's something very Joe Kubert about this little segment right here and and how, how would that be um how would that be if uh, it's it's like a fantasy of mine if joe kubert could have actually illustrated a few I issues of conan oh my god how awesome would that have been right But anyway, there you go. Conan takes the young blonde virgin girl and says, It's okay, girl. Yeah, well, I wonder what happens next uh, that we don't see. Uh -uh. Letter page. Half page ad for Monsters Unleashed, classic Bronze Age stuff. Yeah, the day Bill told off his boss. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Just a beloved comic book. Conan and the Barbarian, number 28. Um, I'll be back one of these days, gang, with uh, something else. I don't know what but something else. So, uh, see y'all later. Bye-bye.